Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to be talking about how to research ETFs. Uh, for anyone who is interested in learning more about ETFs and how to invest in it, uh, that's what today's per uh, video is designed to help you understand. Um, so I'm going to be using my trading platform with Fidelity uh, to show you guys different types of ETFs. Now, if you don't have Fidelity, that's okay. You can go ahead and access whatever trading platform you're using. Um, my main purpose is really to help you understand uh, base, the basic terminology behind these ETFs, what type of ETFs you, you can look at. So the information is still the same even though you're using a different trading platform. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing uh, I want to kind of go over is there's different ETFs regarding uh, industries. As you can see here, there's Fidelity, uh, there's financials, there's real estate ETFs, technology-based uh, utilities so all these ETFs uh, specialize in a specific sector um, so if you're researching an ETF you want to make sure that uh, when you do look at these sectors it's gonna you want to you want to basically um, analyze the performance so let's say for example you're looking at technology ETFs okay so let's go ahead and click on technology all right and we should get um, fidelity is pretty high tech when it comes to researching ETFs so if your trading platform doesn't um, off, uh, provide these types of um, resources to you, uh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, but again, we're just going to see what type of ETFs. Oh, there you go. So it took me straight to the technology ETF. All right. So here, uh, normally you want to go to where it says performance and risk. And that's going to give you a pretty good... Um, information in terms of how the ETF has been performing so as you can see here uh, what I want to look at is the five-year market return so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that so I can get the largest return uh, from top to bottom all right so as you see here uh, power shares has a 30% return um, average within the five years which is pretty amazing um, you also have ice share semiconductor uh, spider so you're gonna get a whole different list of ETFs um, and you you can analyze whether an ETF has been performing based off the five-year return and some platforms even offer a 10-year return um, so I want to go ahead and click on iShares I'm gonna take a look at SOXX and I should it should take me to the page directly uh, with more information on this ETF all right, so just waiting on this loading, and it looks like there we go. Okay, all right. So the first thing I want to look at, okay, um, I want to look at the net expense ratio, 0.48 percent. That's a little bit um, higher than what I usually like. I usually like to look at ETFs with the lowest expense ratio, such as like 0 0.07, 0 0.08. However, with this technology ETFs, you may find um, expense ratios that are a little bit higher given that technology is, is always um, growing so that may have something to do with it all right as you can see the dividend yield is 0 0.90 uh, percent which is pretty good uh, as if definitely you're going to invest in ETFs all right um, some more information that you can look at here is look at the dividend pay dates uh, as you can see they pay dividends on the 26th of December of 2017 so that's pretty good all right um, you also want to okay so let, let's take a look at this um, we're gonna look at the how it's been performing within the last couple of years we want to compare this ETF and how it's been doing um, against the, the benchmark which is the S&P 500 all right so as you see here um, the past 10 years this ETF has performed an average of 12.95 percent um, versus the SP 500 has delivered 8.49. So that right there already tells you, okay, this ETF is m more likely to perform better than the SP 500. All right, so you definitely want to look at that. I would, um, I would, I would personally do is either invest in the benchmark such as the SP 500 or an ETF that does better than the benchmark. So I don't want to invest in an ETF that's going to do worse than the benchmark because um, you're better off just buying the index of the S&P 500. All right, so that's pretty good. That's, that shows me that this ETF has a pretty long track record. Uh, I also like to look at 
ETFs to have a 10 year track record because uh, you can see that they've been around. So usually with newer ETFs, if you don't have lots of information on historic data, um, it's going to be hard to tell where the ETF will be in the next couple of years. But as you can see with this ETF, it's been around for more than 10 years. So that's basically what you want. You want an ETF that's, that has, um, you know, endured the financial uh, crashes. Um, you want to, you want to, as you can see here in 2009 was when the uh, crash happened. Um, you want an ETF that is going to basically uh, withstand those crises and still be able to grow throughout the long period of time. All right, so I can actually compare this to the S&P 500. I can compare this to the NASDAQ and I can also compare it to the Dow Jones. All right, so we should get some sort of a line and there you go. Uh, the S&P 500 has probably done uh, just about the same throughout the early, um, late to 2009, 2010. Um, but as you can see, the past couple years, technology has just really uh, driven up. All right, you can also compare it to the Dow Jones and also the NASDAQ. So we should get all. And those are pretty much benchmarks. Um, if you're looking at the S&P 500, if you're looking at the Dow Jones, and if you look at the NASDAQ, even the NASDAQ, you see these are all benchmarks. So, so again, you want to make sure that whatever ETF you're investing in, um, you know, they're doing as well as the benchmarks or better. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go back. Uh, I want to give you guys more information on the different types of ETF. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click this. I'm going to go back to the screener. So I want to show you guys the, the ETF screener. So I'm going to click research, go to ETFs. You can actually set up a screener. Uh, so if your trading platform has some type of uh, um, um, icon where you can just click screener, go ahead and open that up. And you should get a, base, a, a basic view of how you want to research. So if you want to do like market capitalization, then hold it. go ahead and click that. And here you're going to get access to small cap, mid cap, large cap, all different types. And um, there we go. Okay. So there you go. You have multi cap, large cap, mid cap, and small cap. So all this is basically telling you is that large cap is basically large companies, mid sized companies, and small to micro size. Um, now, I recently did some research on small cap, and small cap value has really done good throughout the years uh, as you'll see here we're going to go to performance again and we're going to go ahead and click uh, from largest to smallest market return and there you go you have iShares which is IJR all right you can go ahead and lock, click on that and it should take us to the same page only for IJR which is iShares small cap all right once you get access to the page there you go. You see a 0 0.07 net expense ratio. So this ETF is a lot um, cheaper to hold versus the technology one that we looked at earlier. Uh, but as you can see, um, even throughout the 10 year, let's let's go ahead and look at the 10 year track record. We'll open up a separate page here. Um, so as you can see here, the 10 year track track record of small cap has been 10%. So 2% less than technology. Um, you know, it's, it all depends on the amount of risk you want to take. I mean, you want to take a little less risk um, and less reward. As you can see, technology was able to average at least 12%. Um, so again, I, I personally like small cap. It's, it's well diversified. Uh, you can also see where the stocks are held in what sector. So, for example, you'll see here um, top holdings are in are the companies you see here. Uh, sector right so we're going to click on sector and you can see that this small cap ETF is well diversified in, in, in several amounts of industries uh, bank real estate healthcare so I like small caps ETFs they're just very well diversified versus a technology ETF is heavily um, focused on pure technology so you might not get as much diversity investing in a technology ETF or a healthcare ETF or a real real estate alone ETF. Uh, small, mid, and large cap are pretty well diversified, and they have historically delivered some good returns. All right, so that's pretty much it when you're looking to ETFs. There's not a lot of in-depth research that you have to look at. Um, you know, just make sure that 
the company that the ETF has a, a, a nice track record and you know you don't have to re really research the individual companies because there's so many some of these ETFs hold over 500 companies um, and if you read Benjamin Graham um, intelligent investor he actually phrases you know if you're a beginning investor and you really don't know how to start investing indexing is the way to go so um, it requires less research it's it's, it's more of a passive investment um, you know I, I wouldn't call it speculation but I would definitely uh, compare it to how it's done with the with the rest of the benchmarks from the market all right so I, I hope that was useful in your ETF research and I really uh, Wish you guys the best of luck when you guys are investing into these ETFs. Again, just make sure that you do your own research, or if you're working with a you know professional um, licensed professional, um, that's great. Also, um, if you guys have any questions, please, please feel free to leave me a comment. And if you like learning about investing and how to how to really maneuver these trading platforms, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'll be posting more videos on stuff like this. All right, so thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.